Okay. So last week, um, at the very end of class, I told everyone to create a title text sprite. Down here, I create a new sprite that said Maze Game. And what I wanted everyone to do was to make an enlarging animation similar to the one that we had done for the Start Game button. So I have the code over here, but before I go over that, I'm just going to um, play this and show you kind of what I meant by that. So as you can see right now, both of my title text and my Start Game button, both of them can enlarge at the same time. So the way you do this is similar to how we did it for the start game button over here. We told it, we told the button to go to a certain size, very small size at the beginning, and then increase it slowly until it reached um, the size of 100. So basically what I did was copy, copy this section of the code right here and then pasted it into my title text. And so now, um, uh, this is in here, like that. And another thing to note is we want to make the title go a little bit further up than zero, zero. So typically, if you want to center something, the coordinates are typically zero, zero. But if you look here, right now, my coordinates are at x0, y0. And our title text is too close to our start game button. And sometimes um, that doesn't look very good because there's too much space over here. There's too much space at the top. So what we want to do is to move it up a little bit to y is equal to 50 so that there is a relatively equal, equal space between them. So now that we have this, we have um, an animation for our uh, start game button and an animation for our title text. If we play it once again, um, they both enlarge from uh, a small size to a big size. But what if I didn't want both of them to do the same thing? What if I thought that was kind of boring? Well, there's um, another form of animation that we can use, and it's under motion. So just now this enlarging animation, this was under looks, did it mainly under looks, but let's look at motion. There are two blocks over here that say glide um, a number of seconds to random position or x, y coordinate. So what this um, glide block does is it makes um, the sprite go from its current position to a new position that you can specify within the time that you put. So let's say this time was 0.5. Um, the lesser the time is, it means that um, the, the sprite will take less time to get to uh, the place, therefore making it faster. But if I change this to five seconds, means that um, this maze game, uh, our sprite will take a, lot, a little bit longer to reach to a certain spot. So this is what we're going to use actually instead of our enlarging emo animation for now because um, we don't really want both of them to start small and grow big. So if I drag this under here and change this to 0 0.5 seconds because I want it to go a little bit faster but if you look over here, it says uh, go to x0, y50, and we want it to glide once uh, 0 0.5 seconds to x0 and y50. There's a problem here. They're both starting at the same position, so that means that 
um, the title text will basically not move at all. And we want it to move from the top of our, top of our screen to um, this 0, 050 um, position somewhere over here. So what we need to do to, the, um, to make that happen is to just change this Y value to something uh, really high. Like um, I'm going to change it to 190. So um, sometimes there may be errors with Scratch making this a little bit slow. So if it doesn't run on the very first try, give it some time. You can work through other things first and it should work um, by the time our meeting is over today. But yeah, this is what um, your main menu should look like right now. And if you notice over here, there's also another glide block here, the glide number of seconds to a random position mouse pointer. Just does the same thing, except you can um, make it go to any random position instead of just um, instead of just going to a specified coordinate, but we probably won't be using this um, for now. Okay, so next what we are going to learn about is broadcasting messages. And we're going to do that um, with our start game button. So if you notice in the code right now, both of these, um, the title text and the button, they both come down when we um, want them to. But when I click on the start game button, this title text doesn't move yet. And that's because we, we don't have anything that's moving this yet. And we're only moving this one sprite. We're only moving the start game button. So in order to in order to um, in order to make both of them move at the same time, what we can do is broadcast messages. So under events here, you will notice that the very last two blocks they aren't actually these uh, capped blocks. They are um, the same blocks as everything else. And we're going to bring out this broadcast message block. So um, we want to use um, the broadcast message and not broadcast message and wait, because what this one does is it will wait for, um, will wait for another sprite to receive this message and do whatever it needs to do. And then after it does that, then it um, finishes with its code. But what we want to do for our game here is, is to make um, this button disappear and for this title text to move back up to the top, both at the same time. So we are going to use the normal broadcast message and not the broadcast message and wait. So I'm going to, going to bring it under here because I want it to, um, I want to, I want it to broadcast the message when I click on this button. If you notice here, our message right now is called message one. That's not very helpful if you want to have multiple messages, a lot of messages in your game, which is what we're actually going to have. So to make it easier for us to read and for other people to read, we're going to just create a new message. I'm going to call it a start, start game button clicked. So what this will do is um, our block here, it will broadcast a message. It will broadcast this start game button click message to all of our sprites over here. So all of them will receive this message and um, they don't all have to do something. So if we go into title text here. We look under events again and go to the, the, first, the block above this broadcast block. There's um, when I receive message cap block. And this is where we can choose to put um, different blocks underneath it so that it can, um, it can 
uh, do what we want when we call this message underneath here. So what do we want this title text to do? Well, since it came from um, from the top to the bottom, then we want it. Um, we want to make this title text go from this current position back to the top. So in order to do that, we can just use the same glide block over here. I can just duplicate this. And instead of the Y having to be 50, I can change it to 190 because that's where it started. Now if I try to run it, you can see that uh, we can still see this red um, outline of our title text. And we don't want to see that because it's disturbing for um, our players during the game. So we can just get rid of it completely by going to looks and going to hide. Now, when I bring this over here, um, my maze game will still go up, but this time it will just completely disappear after it moves to this position. Okay, so see, now, now that works. But when I run it again, we don't see our, um, we don't see our title text. That's because we have already hidden it from before. So in order to make it show, we just need to bring out a show block under when green flag clicked. And yeah, so now we can see it. And both functions work. Okay. Okay, so now that we have a general kind of animation for our for our game, we're going to start playing with the background and changing it so that it can be a little bit more interesting. Because right now, um, our background is just white, right? And a white background isn't very isn't very fun to look at. So um, I'm going to just change the background right now by going over here. So this is the stage, um, kind of like control center, similar to what we had as the sprite control center. This is um, where we can control all the, um, the, all the backgrounds, things that we have. So if you just notice in the code right now, in this backdrop code, and you click on motion, you notice that there are no motion blocks under here. And that's because um, the stage can't move. The background can't move. So that's why there aren't any motion blocks. But for the rest, there um, it should be pretty much the same as all of our other sprites. But before we do anything, where I'm going to click on this backdrops tab right here, and it will bring up this, this uh, blank canvas. Okay, and if any of you uh, need my project during the um, during the uh, this session, I'll just send it in the chat right now, and you can reference back to it at any point. So I want to be able to fill um, my space down here. I want to be able to fill it with a certain color to make the backdrop. So let me just change this color first. I'm going to change it to a light blue color. But if you notice, I click on this paint bucket. That means to fill, right? And if I click on this square, it doesn't turn blue. And that's because right now we're in what's called vector mode. And um, in this, there are two different modes. There's vector mode and bitmap mode. So what um, bitmap mode is basically made up of pixels and vectors are kind of made up of like lines, shapes, there are curves in this. So um, that means that if you zoom in too much on, on um, a bitmap, 
all the lines, it will start getting very pixelated. And as you can see over here in these options, you can see that uh, they're a little bit more pixelated. And the circle here um, isn't a complete circle because um, in pixels, you can't really bend them, right? So we have to be able to uh, use um, individual pixels to make it um, to make a circle. But um, this concept is a little bit complicated. But what you basically you need to do is go to this blue button down here and click on convert to bitmap. And it will bring up um, this canvas in bitmap mode. All you just need to do is click on this paint bucket and press, um, press the square. And you can see our backdrop changing here. But after you do this, make sure to convert it back to vector or else we might start seeing pixels if we're not careful. Okay. So now that we have a backdrop for our game, let's continue with um, what we want our game to do. So right now when I click the start game button, uh, both of like the title text and the start game button, they both disappear. But um, what do we want to show up next? Well, the next thing that we want to show up is kind of like options for our user to play the different games that we have created. So remember in the very first class, we created different motions for each of our sprites. So we have the cat um, motion, which is just moving up and down, left, right. Then we had the car sprite, which uh, allowed the car to turn in certain direction and move in a driving movement. And the, uh, the last movement that we had was our basketball movement, where our basketball followed our mouse and then stopped whenever it hit an edge or touched our mouse. So we want the user to be able to have options for playing all of these different games. So we need to make a title text for the next page as well. So in order to do that, I'm actually not going to be creating a new sprite because it's going to be um, performing the exact same functions as this title text here, the maze game text right here. So I'm just going to go under costumes. And what costumes does is it it can make your um, sprite look a, looks a little bit different. Like what we saw in the cat, your cat can be running or walking. So um, that's basically what we want, but we'll do that for the title text. So I'm just going to right click here and duplicate this text so that it's the exact same size or sip, or I can make it a similar size. And uh, similar to how sprites have names, these costumes, they have names as well. So we should change the names of them so that we don't get confused later on when we're coding. So I'm going to call this um, maze game text. I'm going to call it um, main screen because this is our main screen for the, the um, game. And then for this one, I'm going to ch change the text to say movement select. Make sure to center it. And I'm going to call this selection. So we have two costumes right now. We have the main screen and the selection uh, costumes. And another thing that I want to do is to change the color of this because we already have a red color here. So let's make this slightly different. I can make it uh, maybe a pinkish color, like this. Okay. So now we have a different text. But uh, remember, same with how we have previously set the positions um, or set whether to show or hide. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, when the green flag is clicked, we want to see maze game. 
Because right now, if I click the green flag, it will just go to whatever text is on here. And we want it to make sure it says maze game and not movement select yet. Because if it says movement select, our user will just get confused. So under looks, there are different costume options. The one that we're going to be using is switch costume. This um, this basically tells, um, tells Scratch that uh, we want the costume to be switched to this one, not the other one. And there's also another option under here that says next costume. But um, this one basically just, uh, let's say you have multiple costumes that you want uh, the program to switch over, then you can use this one. But because we, we know which costume we're going to be on uh, for the main slide and when um, af after like this animation is done, then we can just use um, uh, the switch costume. So now if I run it, okay, it switches back to the maze game again. So now that I click this, uh, nothing else will pop out yet because we haven't coded anything for that. So in order to make um, this movement select costume, um, this selection costume come out, we need to broadcast another message under start game button. And we've already broadcasted a message here. So what we need to do is to broadcast a message, another message at the end of this to tell the code that, okay, I'm done making all of the um, all of the sprites hidden on the main page and I would like to go to the next page. So I'm just going to be creating a new message. And we can't use the same one because this will just create errors later in our game. So I'm going to create a new message and call it start game button animation finished. So what this will do is it will tell all of the sprites that, okay, I'm done with this animation. What do I do next? Well, what do we want to do next? We want to bring down this movement select um, text, right? So we can just bring out another when I receive message block. Make sure it's the correct message or else your code, um, it will bring down something else. So when I receive the start game button animation, um, when I receive this message, I want this costume to switch from this one to um, switch from the maze game to the movement select. And I also want it to glide from this position up here to uh, the current position it is right now. So that's going to be your first challenge for today. Um, see how you can make your title text change costumes and then glide from above to this position right here. Give you um, one minute to do that.
Okay, that should be enough time, and I'm going to go for the answer now. So what we have to do first is to actually make it show, because when we do that, our our title text is hidden up here, right? So we need to make this code show um, show the show the title text first, and then it can um, go to wherever it needs to be. Next thing we want to do is to make it go to selection. Switch the costume to the movement select text, and then also make it glide to the position. But since we already have this block of code here under when green flag clicked, I can just duplicate this and bring it underneath here so that it can um, it can go to that same position. So now if we test it, uh, this comes down, but once um, once once uh, this title text receives this animation finished message, it will bring down our movement select. And another important thing that we have to do is underneath our start game, our start game button code. Um, if you notice over here, this entire thing, this is all a forever loop right here. And it will just keep on running. And um, if we wanted to choose options, we're going to have different options for boxes later on over here. And if we wanted all these different options and we accidentally click on that spot where this start game button is um, hidden, then that will cause um, errors later in our code for like these messages being broadcasted multiple times. And we don't want that. So after, um, after this sprite broadcasts its last message, which is the start game button animation finished, then what we want to do is to make sure to stop stop this part of the code to make sure um, no bugs will happen later on. So underneath control, if you go down here, there's a stop. Um, there's a stop button. And you can put it under here. So stop all means that um, it will stop all of the sprites uh, programs, but that's not what we want. And there's like stop this script and stop other script and spot. But we want to stop this one, uh, this forever loop from changing. So I'm just going to be using stop this script for now. And if I run it, it will still do the same functions, except now we can um, avoid, um, we can avoid this uh, bug that will come possibly later on. Everyone have that so far. Okay. Okay, so now that we're on this page, right, we have this movement select over here and movement select, we want to have options. We want to have options for each one of our for each one of our sprite movements, right? Like I talked before, the cat is um, an up, down, left, right motion. The car has a driving motion and the basketball is controlled by your own mouse. So we're actually going to be creating one of those buttons together uh, in this main room right now. And then later um, I'll ask um, you to go into breakout rooms and then create um, the two other buttons that will go here. But first, let's just create one of the buttons right now. So instead of um, instead of com creating a completely new button from scratch, we can just duplicate our start game button over here and just duplicate it so that uh, we don't have to copy. Uh, we don't have to try and um, make them all the same size. We can just duplicate it. And if you notice, uh, this duplicated version here, the name is Start Game Button 2. It has the exact same code already stored in here as um, the Start Game Button. 
which uh, we will use most of it. So this is really helpful so that you don't have to read your code every single time. So what I want to do first is to change okay, um, change um, the costume here so that it looks um, a little bit different than our start game button. Let's more appealing for uh, the slide. First, I'm going to change the text in here to make it say four way movement. And be sure to center your um, text. And if I make my um, if I make my button a little bit bigger, I can see that um, three of these buttons fall the same size. They might not all fit. So what I can do now is to just make my uh, rectangle a little bit smaller and also make my text smaller by um, using these corner adjustments and adjusting it to uh, where I want. So now that looks a lot smaller and we can probably fit three of these on the same screen. And then before I move on, I'm just going to change the color of the rectangle and the text so that it doesn't um, look the same as the start game button. So for the text, I'm going to change it to like an orange, orange color. And for the background, I'm going to change it to the purple color. Like, like this. And another important thing that you should do every time you uh, duplicate something is to change the name of your sprite. Because just now, uh, uh, when you duplicate it, sprite automatically adds a number at the end. So just now, uh, when we duplicated it, uh, the sprite name is start game button 2. But this does not say start game, right? So we need to change uh, the title, uh, the name of the sprite to four way movement button so that it matches um, our text over here. Okay, so um, for this, this option right here, we wanted to have similar functions to. Um, to our start game button, but we don't want it to show at the very beginning. So I'm just going to take out this entire block of text. This, uh, all of this text that's underneath of when green flag clicked, I'm going to bring it out. I'm going to put it under something else later. But for now, we need to make sure that it's going to the right position when we press, um, when we press this button, and also that it's um, that it's hidden. So let's um, first bring out this hide block and then now we can go to motion and um, bring it to a specific position. So let's see. Right now it's at right now it's at uh, let's say 0, negative 1000. We want this to move to the left a little bit so that um, there there's space for three for two other um, buttons here. So I'm just going to change this X to negative 150. Okay, so that looks good. Then now we can just uh, bring out a go to X Y block and it will match the values that we want it to. And remember back here, under the first start game button, where we broadcasted this game button animation finished? Well, we want that to also apply to our four-way movement block, because we want it to have that enlarging animation when it, um, when it first, uh, when it 
uh, comes down with this movement select. So we can just bring out that same when I receive animation finished block, can just bring this out again and then um, keep this code pretty much the same. But there are a few errors that we need to first address. So we need to first take out this go to xy block because we have already initialized it under the one green flag click block and we don't want it to go back to this zero negative 100 position. So let's just take that out. So if I scroll down at my code, I notice that it's still broadcasting the same messages as our start game button. And that's because we copied the entire sprite, we made a duplicate of it, and now that also copies um, the code. So we need to be able to um, create new, new messages for each one of these functions, create new messages so that, um, so that we can have different um, different functions for like the movement select uh, movement to go back up and also different like different appearances of our movements. So what I can just um, make this new message for and click on new message I can just change it to four-way movement button clicked. So now that that's there, I can do the same thing to this uh, start game button animation finish, except I'm going to replace the start game with four way movement. Four way movement button animation finished. So this is what this section of your code should be looking like right now. Okay. So now that we have our messages in place, we need to um, make them do something, right? We need to make them change another sprite. Um, make some movements happen. So I want similar to when we first started this game, when I click this start game button, the maze game also goes up, right? The maze game also goes up. And now when I click this, nothing else happens because we haven't put anything else in. So what I want to happen when I click this is to make this movement select go up as well. And that's what this first broadcast message here is for. The button clicked message, we want to put that also in the title text. So again, I can just bring out another one of these when I receive message blocks and make sure to change it to the correct message. Because if you don't um, change it to the correct message, then, and you're broadcasting something different, uh, your code won't work properly. So make sure that uh, whatever message that you want to send to the other sprites, um, for those other sprites, you click on the right message to receive. So when I receive four-way movement button clicked, um, what I what I want to do is to make it go up. Right? Well, thankfully, we already have this section of code over here. It says glide uh, uh, seconds to XY and hide. So I can just duplicate this code and bring it under here. And you can see that um, our, our text just moved up. So let's see what our animation game looks like for now. Okay, so now if I click this, um, both of them should slowly disappear. Okay, so that worked. Um, but now we're kind of left with this blank screen here. We're left with this blank screen and we don't really have anything to play with. So let's change that. 
previously when I said forward movement, I meant the cat movement, right? The up, down, left, right movement. So that's what we had with the cat. So what we want to do is to make this cat appear, um, appear when uh, this animation is finished. But first, before we can do anything, we need to make sure to hide it at the very beginning. So take out whatever code that you had before underneath the when green flag click and bring it out to the side so that we have room to just put a hide um, yeah, a hide uh, block under here. Okay, next we can just bring out our good old when I receive message block again and make sure this time it should say four way movement button animation finished. So our cat um, will now show when um, show at zero zero when we press um, when this animation is finished. So let's test it out. Okay, as you can see, our cat is here and we can play with it. Right. Okay, I think there might be another problem with our game right now. If you notice, all of our backdrops for all these different uh, menu options in the game, they're all the same. And uh, players, they like to see kind of a change in the background so that they know the difference between their um, menu screens and their um, and their game screen. So we can just change the backdrops similar to how we can change the different costumes for our sprites. So if you remember this stage backdrop control panel here, just click on this backdrop over here and Go into this backdrops tab and this is where you can see uh, what we created earlier with this blue screen. Before I um, create an, before I try to duplicate this, I'm actually going to name this, um, name this, uh, name this backdrop so that I don't get confused with it later. I'm just going to call this menu screen. And then now I can duplicate it and it brings out the same thing. So for this one, since that one is called menu, I want this one to be a game screen. Game screen. So now we can just um, change the color of this. But if you remember, remember there's a difference between vectors and bitmaps, right? Vectors, um, there are lines. There aren't any lines, aren't any like definite lines here for us to paint into. So we have to first convert it to bitmap and choose our paint bucket and choose um, another color for this to change to. So I'm going to choose this green color right here. I click it and that changes the background. Now similar to our costumes, we can um, set which backdrop we want at the very beginning versus um, when this cat appears. So at the beginning, we want to have this blue screen. We want to have this menu screen, right? Well, under looks, there's also uh, a tab called switch backdrop to. And this can, uh, like how we did the with the title text of switching the costume to the main screen versus the movement select, we can do the same thing with our backdrop. So we can first switch the backdrop to the menu screen when the green flag is clicked. And then let's see, when do we want to switch the backdrop to our game screen? We want to switch it when this cat appears, right? Well, if I look at all my options down here, um, I look at all the options down here, there really isn't any one that says when this cat shows on the screen. But we can just use the same 
the same message call that we did as with the cat, the same message call because they share the same uh, message um, airway. And I can say when I receive forward movement button animation finish, then I can switch the game drop to the game screen. So now if I uh, test it, you can see that it's still blue and I press this. Okay, so now it's green and we can see our cat on the screen. So I'm going to let everyone take, um, take a little bit to just finish up this code. And then after we're done with that, we're going to go into breakout rooms and see um, and create two more buttons for um, for our game. We can create two more buttons, and then after that, we'll come together and slowly check our answers together. Okay, sorry everyone for the confusion, um, but we are back now. Um, yeah, so make sure uh, you have all of this code um, copied down. If you don't have it um, copied down, I'm just going to send my project again in the chat. Make sure um, you have this uh, available. And we're going to be going into breakout rooms next, but I need to first explain what we're doing. So just now we had um, created this four-way movement uh, button. And we want to create two more buttons, one, one over here and one over here. So we need to create two more buttons and I'll type in the chat type in the chat what each one is uh, should say so the center button center button that's going to be here that one should be called called driving movement and the right button that's going to be over here that one should be called um, mouse movement So 
Just to recap, the center one should be called driving movement and the right button should be called mouse movement. And um, for the driving movement, I want you to show the car, uh, just like how we did with the cat, the four-way movement, we showed the cat. And for the mouse movement, I want you to show the basketball. Okay. So I'm going to be putting everyone into breakout rooms, to groups of three or four, to solve this problem together. And uh, you should be able to share your screens uh, in these breakout rooms so you can figure out together how to solve this um, challenge together. And just a hint, make sure um, to duplicate duplicate this four-way movement button so that all of your buttons are the same size because we don't want one button that's this size, another one that's this size, and then another one that's tiny like this. We want them all to be this size right here so it looks nicer for the player to play. So uh, we're going to open up the breakout rooms again and you're going to go in there and work uh, with work with your group and see how far you can get in this challenge. Okay, um, yeah, I think your breakout room should be open and you can go in there and work on this challenge.
Okay, I'm planning to bring them back in just a few more minutes. Um, yeah. Uh, Jacqueline, uh, Laura just asked for help. Uh, do you want to join the breakout room? Uh, okay, sure. Uh, in room one, I believe. I'll check up on the other room.
Uh, when do you want the breakout rooms closed? Um, maybe in like a minute. Yeah, okay. give it a Fine, minute. Just, I'll close them now. Okay, I believe everybody is back now. Um, we don't really have much time to go over the code, but what I want to make sure everyone uh, has um, by the end of today is your four-way movement, your four-way movement button, your driving movement button, and your mouse movement button. Remember, I want these connected. I want this connected to the cat. Uh, this one to the car, and the mouse movement to the basketball. Okay, and um, the homework for next week is. Um, I want everyone to make their game eventually look like this. So. We have these uh, three buttons like before, but when I click on each one, um, it will go to the correct screen and everything else will like disappear and we can play with the game. So the cat, um, the cat appears when I click on four-way movement button and then the basketball appears when I click on the mouse. So this should be, um, so this should be what uh, your game should look like by next week, um, the homework for next week. So this is it. Um, yeah. If you have any questions right now, you can uh, continue staying on. But if you don't have any more questions, uh, feel free to leave this meeting and we will see you next week. And uh, I'll also paste my project in the chat if anyone needs it. Okay, Laura or Edward, do you guys have any questions? Okay. Okay.
Okay, so, uh, so that's the fourth class currently, right? Yeah. Right, this is yeah. This. Yeah. So firstly, apologies for uh, not making it to yesterday's class. I was having some Zoom and internet issues. No, that's fine. Um, it went actually pretty smoothly, so, but okay. uh, yeah. So now both classes, they are both up to speed at the same pace. Um, yeah, so I'll, how about this? Um, I'll send you the um, responses from homework one and homework two, and I'll, uh, and I'll grade them and see uh, like what improvements can be made. And I'll give you like a report somewhere, maybe like in the next couple of days. Okay, yeah. And then if you want to talk about those like improvements at the beginning of the classes, you can. Yeah, so we can meet like uh, six, uh, so the class starts at 7.30 p.m. PST, um, right. my time. And then, so we can meet maybe like 30 minutes before the class starts. Okay, that, that should be good. Okay, cool. Okay, in that case, I guess see you on Sunday? Yep, see you on Sunday. Okay, bye.